you're watching Dog Your Musings, and I'm Monica, and today we're going to do a book review of Devil House by John Darnell. I heard about this book from a couple of booktubers, and I've heard amazing things about it, so I wanted to see what the hype was about. So who is John Darnell? You might know John Darnell from his popular band, The Mountain Goats, where he is lead singer and kind of frontman of the band. He writes the songs and the lyrics. And what I found really compelling when I did some research about him was in a New York Times article, the journalist Helen Rossner wrote, Darnell writes songs that are narrative, literary, and full of reoccurring literary motifs. Cruel stepdads, grief, sci-fi, death, metal, small southern town, delusion, and ambition. The blurred lines between love and hate. And what I felt really compelling about this quote in this article that talks about his music was that those themes were all reoccurrent in his novel, Devil House. So what is Devil House about? Um, well, in case you couldn't tell by the super 70s true crime vibes that this cover gives off, this is a book that is fiction, but definitely reads as a non-fiction true crime account. This focuses on the true crime writer, Gage, who is moving into a really creepy, dilapidated house. And he's trying to uncover the mystery and the crime that is attached to the house that he has moved into. Devil House has gotten really popular within the booktube community because of the way that Darnell blurs the lines between, why did I say blur so weird? Blurs the lines between reality and fiction. There are moments within when you're, go when you're reading where you forget that this isn't a true story, that this is just from Darnell's imagination. So what were some of the cons? When I was reading this book, what I kind of noticed was how much of a slow burn this book was. And if you're somebody who really likes a fast paced plot, this might draw you out from enjoying the experience. Now that isn't to say that Darnielle doesn't throw like kind of tricks or twists and turns. There are moments when you might be walking or feel like you're walking through a pretty solid path and then a trap door kind of opens up from underneath you. And that's how the reading experience felt like, though those paths kind of seemed long and windy. Another con that I had with the book was there's this one section that Darnielle decides to like do a Welsh folktale retelling. And this connects vaguely with the main themes of the story, but just vaguely. And as a reader, I was really tempted to skip past this point because the themes, I could guess why he was doing it, but it really didn't make any sense. And also the fake old English that he was using was really, really fake. And the font that he was using was super inaccessible and really hard to read at times. Now, I understood why he tried to use this story within the text, but at the end of the day when I was done reading it, I thought that he could have removed this section from the book and his text would have actually really benefited from that story not being in there. Those were the two cons that I had with the book. But the majority of the reading experience, I really enjoyed. This is a type of reading that I don't normally gravitate towards. I don't really find myself reading a lot of true crime. And so now that I've read this book, I'm really interested in picking up more stories like it. I loved the lens that Darnielle kind of takes. So he, this is kind of a critique on the genre, kind of thinking about the victims as well as the family members who are affected um, by the retellings of true crime. And Darnell kind of holds these stories with really, uh, with real sensitivity and care when he tells that aspect of the story, which I thought he does really well. I also thought this was really prevalent, especially when the book 
came out came out around the same time that the latest Jeffrey Dahmer biopic came out which I thought made this book even more relevant in how people feel about these retellings. Another thing that I also really loved was again that blurring between reality and fiction. At times it felt like I was listening to a true crime podcast even though I was reading the text. Now, if I had to read this book again, I think I would opt for the audio version of this book just because I think it would really kind of highlight that aspect a lot more and would make for an even more enjoyable experience. So I really recommend you trying to listen to the audio version of this. I think it would make the text even more exciting. Another and final aspect of what I really liked about this book was each section of the story was from a different perspective and I love a split perspective narrative um, but what I thought made this even more important was in the true crime aspect Darnielle kind of gives voice to multiple sections within the story that might not have gained perspective if it was an actual uh, true crime story kind of highlighting again his critique on who gets to have the narrative and who's affected by the narrative when stories are told. Not in an apologist way, but in a sensitive way. So when I was trying to find read-alikes, I kind of, this was a really hard one for me because Darnielle does something that is kind of new and unique. And that was an aspect as a reader that I also found really exciting. I guess when I was thinking about it, even though Darnielle really critiques true crime and kind of that genre, what I found myself gravitating towards was true crime recommendations. A book that I read that really highlighted this experience to me was Devil in the White City. And this is kind of a true crime non-fiction that reads like fiction so kind of blurring the lines again between reality and fiction except this is actually a real story that happened which focuses on the world's fair and a major crime event that was connected to it and also if you lis like listening to true crime podcasts or even YouTube videos like Mr. Ballin. You might actually really enjoy this book, especially if you listen to the audio version of it. This was my review of Devil House, again, by John Darnielle. Hopefully this book, if you read it, will get you into the Halloween spirit. I know it definitely did for me. So with that, that's been my review for this week. My name's Monica. You've been watching Dog Ear Musings. Happy reading. Mm -hmm.